says you need a vacation for a view like this. Or I wish there was a place to get in shape. Try getting on the beaten path. Discover an ever-expanding network of trails and greenways. Some quintessential southern beauty. Or romp through the woods in a magical land between the rivers. There's more to explore than you ever imagined. Beyond the swing sets, Breck, we are more than a playground. Hi, business owners. Phase three. Woohoo! But do your customers know you're back? Well, that's where the Clarence Bud Show and Pelican Broadcasting can help. Right now, we've got great rates on advertising packages to help you get the word out. Shoot me an email at bugsclarence at gmail.com. Or better yet, call me up. I'd love to talk with you. 225-485-6839. Let's get together and make Phase 3 the best it can possibly be. Hello, guys. It's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After 5 Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Roger Cador Show. Clarence Bugs, along with the coach. How are you today, young man? Oh, I'm doing good. And you, Clarence? I am doing well, coach. Thank you for asking. Uh, I'm doing even better because we start today's show speaking with an individual that is legendary in sports circles. He is uh, an individual that literally has dedicated his life to the cause of college athletics, uh, ministry, and a wide variety uh, of other endeavors as well. Coach, if you would, for our viewing audience at home, tell them who we have up first on today's edition of the Roger Cador Show. Yeah, we are honored to have a, a dear friend of mine that I met several years ago. And, uh, you know, he's a guy before the SEC had Bo Jackson. Mm -hmm. They had Bo Carter. <laughs> Bo knows Bo. And, and so when, when we talked, so he was the guy that did a whole lot of good stuff for the SEC and Mississippi State. So, Bo, why don't you take it away and tell us a little th about yourself and some of the things you've done. Coach and Clarence, thank you so much for having me on today. First, it's an honor to be on and get to uh, have – Many good friends besides Coach Cador and our, our friend Brian Lazar with the uh, Tiger Report down there. Mm -hmm. uh, classmate in college, he was here behind me, but we, we uh, helped Vanderbilt win those four SEC uh, Eastern Championships. <laughs> <laughs> Had to slide that in there, right? <laughs> we juiced up the stats a few times. You know? Oh, man. <laughs> but uh, but it's, it's been a real great ride for 50 plus years going back to Vanderbilt and then worked at Mississippi State for 12 years and had a chance to. Uh, uh, promote uh, Rafael Palmero and Will Clark, who, who New Orleans Jesuit guy, by the way. Yes. And, uh, it, it, then left in 1986, worked for the Southwest Conference for 10 years, and we sort of killed it off in 1986, <laughs> <laughs> along with television contract, and then was fortunate to work for the Big 12 for 10 years. But the whole time, Coach and, and Clarence have been fortunate to be the uh, working with the National Collegiate Baseball Writers for mm -hmm. the last, oh, I think, uh, 52 years now, so it's been a real great run with there, and uh, helped just to meet people like Roger uh, Roger Cato and Ricky Weeks, and the people that have won the uh, the annual Dick Hauser Trophy, the Heisman Trophy for college baseball. So it's been a lot of fun. Well, you know, I remember I got a call one morning, sitting in my office from a guy named Bull Bull Carter, that is, and we had never met before, but you told me started asking me questions about Ricky Weeks and that you had been reading about him, and you thought that he had a good chance to win the Dick Heisman Trophy, and that there were some things 
we needed to do it, and I followed the script, and I gave it to my SID. I told him exactly what you told me that he needed to do to help promote Ricky. And we did it, and boy, I mean, and one thing I must say about you, if a week didn't go by where you didn't call to check in and see how things were going. And, and we, <laughs> we developed a friendship that is unsurpassed. Because of, of, of something as small as a phone call, we had never met until we went to Omaha. You and I met for the first time physically right. in Omaha, where we ate some really good steak, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> never go hungry in Omaha, Coach. Nope. Dave know how to take care of people. <laughs> so after more than 50 years in the business, what is your favorite sport to work and is it, is it also your favorite sport to watch? I, honestly, baseball, and I'm not just saying that because of Coach Cato. It, 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 I was kind of a basketball fanatic coming out of high school. I played some basketball in high school, mm -hmm. and then uh, Vanderbilt had some great teams there in the early 70s. But the, the longer I've stayed with it, the more baseball's grown on me. And just it's really uh, had a, it, the great thing about baseball, there's so many wonderful people, and, and not just uh, Roger Cato, but you mentioned Ron Polk, uh, several of the players that have come through there. They've had people that have become uh, doctors, attorneys, nuclear physicists, and everything else. And just uh, the baseball brings everybody together. It's such a such a wonderful, uh, you know, well put together family sport. Do you ever find yourself, Bo, marveling at the fact that you actually get paid for what a lot of folks would do for free? <laughs> It's funny, Clarence, my uncle used to always say, you're the only guy that I know that you can get some free meal. <laughs> and uh, in college athletics, uh, say, hey, that's, that's part, that's the amenities of it. Those are the amenities. But, uh, no, it, it just it never ceased to amaze you. And uh, Coach will love this. About 30 years ago, the, the basketball writers got real uppity and said, uh, we don't want any more free meals from the NCAA. We're, we're, uh, they're bribing us to come to which is totally, it's a convenience. It's not really, a, you know, they're not trying to, Give you right. a steak dinner to, to make you write a better story or, or you know broadcast a better game. Right. But uh, <laughs> for some reason, now in the NCAA basketball tournaments, I think they, they give you like one or two meals the entire uh, week of a regional or first rounds or whatever. Too. But football, you're well, very well taken care of the bowls as coach remembers. But in right. baseball, they uh, you at least get a hot dog and some peanuts. <laughs> 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 the, basketball, the basketball writers are promoting starvation. <laughs> I, uh, I found it interesting in looking at your bio that uh, it's, it's uh, up near the top. Uh, like Coach, like myself, you are a man of faith. I don't know about Coach, but like yours truly, uh, you, you enjoy singing in the choir. Are you any good? And, and would your choir director agree with you, uh, with your assessment of your talent? Well, just sort of try to blend. They always tell us blend in. Don't <laughs> I mean, if you can help, and we, we've got a lot better singers, but we're, we're sort of there as the backup bassist and baritone. So right. uh, it, it makes a lot of, it's very good camaraderie. Unfortunately, during COVID, we had to kind of go virtual choir, which was and they uh, taped a bunch of stuff for Christmas and Easter. So we really uh, sort of uh, I haven't had a chance to get together. But it, it, for safety's sake, it's, it's probably the best thing. If there's a young person watching right now that has aspirations for a career in athletics, be it as a writer, uh, a trainer, a coach, um, what have you. Best advice you could give to that young person, Bo? Coach, a uh, great, great story, a great work, Clarence, great question. Uh, the best thing is to try to make some contacts, maybe write a letter, see if you can, when you're maybe a junior or senior in high school, it's a good time to start. Mm -hmm. uh, write a letter, try to set up an appointment. As you mentioned, the trainers, the PR people, and those guys are in the trenches every day. Right. And they're always looking for good young talent. And uh, or if you're wanting to be a baseball manager, contact the, the southern version of Roger Cador or UNO or LSU mm -hmm. and tell them you'd like to work. You may end up having, to, having a, an unpaid internship, but the people that are good eventually will rise to the top and, and uh, get paid jobs. So it's, it's just a, a case of networking and being willing to work and uh, not, being, not being afraid to roll up the tarp and do a few things mm -hmm. <laughs> along those lines is coachable to you. Did you just walk into being what you do boy, when you were at Vanderbilt? Somebody invited you or you, you did what you're 
you're saying to them they should do. Exactly. I had written for the school newspaper and had done some stuff with the athletics when I was in uh, kept stats for football and basketball team, well, and baseball too, as a matter of fact, uh, when I was in high school. And then they had an alumni meeting in the area, and I talked to one of the uh, people, with the uh, booster club guy from Vanderbilt, and he said, as soon as you get up there, be sure to uh, contact our PO people because we just lost our best student assistant. Just, they just locked up, almost like the same thing happened with the Southwest Conference show when I came out of here. They, uh, they had a guy turn them down about two weeks before the uh, – start a foot, of, of, uh, football practice season, and they said, we really need you to start as soon as you can. So <laughs> you're hired. Come on out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Some, sometimes one man's loss is another person's gain, I guess. Yeah. It happens all the time, and people don't know. Especially I try to tell our young people today that you have to be patient. And that's the one quality I see a lot of our young people sometimes missing is that the patient part of it because they want to be where you and I are mm -hmm. without having to go through the years yeah. of working and failing to get better. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And Clarence can tell you from broadcasting too, you really have to pay your dues down through mm -hmm. the year. And it's, it's not a, you know, uh, life killing thing or anything, but you just have to work hard, make contacts, be there on time. Uh, you know, do your homework and for, for uh, college athletics or any other any other area like that, and just uh, be prepared and come to come to work. Bring your lunch pail with you every day. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a young lady in the building that have worked with me on many projects in the in the past, and she said to me all the time, Coach, I want to get into sports, and we're trying to bridge some opportunity for. Her. But and okay. she's always riding, and that's always a good thing because she's. That's Aggressive. You know, I got to tell a story. One Saturday morning, I was in the bank. Uh, I don't know if I was getting money out or putting in, Bo, but I was in there. And this young lady said, hey, coach. And I'm looking, and I knew I had seen her somewhere. And I said, hello. And she said, I know you don't know me. I'm Aaron. Oh, I gave your name up, Aaron. <laughs> she, I won't give her last name, but she said, listen, if you need any help, I'm available, I work on campus, but I can help you out. And I tell you, that has been, she has turned out to be the most, she's the daughter I never had, Bo, because she does so much for me. And uh, she fusses at me when I miss on some things I should put in the paper. <laughs> she fusses at me. Mm. And she said, you know you have to give me that information. Right. And so that's the kind of stuff. I try to make people understand in sports, you have to you have to let the things be noticed right now what happened because 10 20 minutes from now it may be stale so if something happened really good now you got to let the people know it's not like 20 years ago you got me you're right in, in this twitter and instagram they uh, you have to post it just like you were saying uh, if you look at any college baseball or football or any college event these days there's a twitter thing going out about every 20 or 30 minutes like a southern just scored two runs in the top of the third and uh, it's really the best part about it especially for people that have uh, you got your live statistics on me just about every college event but if, if somebody's in orlando florida and they're uh, trying to you know sort of uh follow a southern grambling baseball game you can look at the twitter feed or the, or the instagram and even see uh or sometimes Facebook, too, you, know, you get the live, uh, sort of live updates, and that really uh, that helps recruiting, that helps the parents, and makes everybody feel, feel really good. I want to get your opinion before we go on the new wave in college athletics is the transfer porter. Uh -huh. Can you give me your opinion on that? <laughs> Coach, it's the wild, wild, wild. <laughs> 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 and Clarence, too, you guys, oh, my gosh, it's amazing. Uh, it's almost like, well, it's, they're recruiting within the within the colleges now, and uh, mm -hmm. the conferences are having a tough time. I saw the ACC finally just gave up and said, you don't have to sit out one year if you transfer within the Atlantic Coast Conference. If you go from Duke to uh, North Carolina, you're automatically eligible. And this is going to open another can of worms. Uh, there was a story the other day on uh, in the Athletic that said they're between – uh, 1,000 and 1,200 yes. Division One college basketball players have, have entered the transfer portal, which is just, boy, uh, you, you can't tell the players without a program these days. 
Yep. Really? It, it, it is a real... Uh, and last thing I'll, I'll shut up. You, the, uh, you've got kids on the teams that are there. They're maybe counting on maybe being a starting guard the next year, and then all of a sudden a transfer comes in from USC, and you're on the bench, so it causes even more. You're, the old LPT lack of playing time. <laughs> yeah. So, it, well, it, it's caused, I think it caused more problems than solutions. Yeah, it does. And I looked at the amount of transfer kids have made a big difference for teams like Houston, Arkansas. I mean, those those teams have benefited tremendous from the transfer students because now they're they in have, this, they're in the the eight the, uh, the super eight right now. They really, I think Gonzaga's got two kids that transferred in. And, uh, yeah, Gonzaga. Yeah. Said on television, they they Mark Pugh asked the team. They said we've got a chance to get so and so to come in from one of the major programs, and they all said, "Hey, yeah, the more the merrier." If somebody sprains an ankle or whatever, we need depth. Uh, it's it's really added a bunch. Well, in some ways, it's helped because teams have gotten sudden. Uh, uh, suddenly, they're nine and ten players deep instead of six or seven in basketball. But. Uh, what it is, it's been a mess, as you know, too, in baseball coaching, just uh, rampant. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You never know who's going to show up and be the starting pitcher for the other team that weekend. That's right. It's, it's really interesting. Well, boy, we could really talk for another hour, but Clarence is pulling my coattail, so we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> we really enjoy you because, you know, Bo knows Bo, and you, you could pay that, play that uh, that guitar for Bo Diddley, okay? It was like, Coach, is Bo Jackson, you say Bo doesn't know Diddley, but he knows Bo. Yeah. <laughs> it, thank, thank you all so much for having me on. It's always, it really, really appreciate the time. Thank you for all you do for college athletics. We really appreciate it. Bo, you're the best. Thanks so much. Take care, Bo. You're welcome. Thank you, Coach. Coach. All care. right. He uh, seems like such a delightful person. Oh, he lo- loves some bull. Talk about it. We, uh, we got to get him back on one of these days. Yeah, we will. Yeah, because one, one segment just cannot yeah, do him you, justice. Yeah, Marty, people, Marty, by the way, is sitting over there looking at Coach and I like this. Yeah, we I messed know, this we, time we, up. We, we, we passed the time. We understand. We'll make it up on the back end. First break of today's edition of the Roger Cador Show. Stay close. Termites. Get Premier Pest. PremierPestServices.com. Hey, Coach Roger Kador here. There's something about teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When I need a tow, I call Roadrunner Towing. Roadrunner's four generations strong and homegrown right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg, we just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. Looking to get some keys made, locks rekeyed, or a wide variety of new and used safe? Then look no further than the trusted choice of Alfred Safe and Lock. Conveniently located off of Government Street in Mid City, Baton Rouge. Trust the expert locksmith at Alfred for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Spiders. Premier Pest Services. Welcome back to today's edition of the Roger Kador Show. It is, um, Certainly a pleasure, uh, and I, I was salivating at the thought of you having this next gentleman on uh, for today's show. He is um, 
probably as South Louisiana a person as you will ever meet. I mean, this guy bleeds crawfish and boudin and <laughs> etouffee and crawfish. Uh, but more than that, he bleeds sports and he bleeds it throughout his pores all across the state of Louisiana and this nation. Coach, if you would, do the honors of introducing to our viewing audience our next guest. Yeah, again, uh, all of these guests are my friends, so mm -hmm. I must say, but Jock and I have a special bond and when, when, you know, there were times when, uh, when we were on the road, for instance, and he needed to know the score, getting late at night. Right. He wanted to make sure he could get the score. Right. He would call the phone. Cell phone. <laughs> and I would always answer. Right. You know, and I wanted to give him that special uh, attention because he deserved it because he did a lot of coverage for us. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Jock Doucet from Channel 9 Sports. Hello, Jock. Hey, guys. Great to be with you today. And, Coach, to this day, my friend, you're the only college coach <laughs> you ought to call on his cell phone during a game and you would answer. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. And I want it to be different. I want it to always be different because accessibility is important. You know, uh, I always felt yeah. it was because now, it, in my opinion, it wasn't me taken away from me from coaching the game because a lot of the time my, the coaching, I allowed my assistant coaches to do the coaching. I was only there for support help. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I, hey, look, I appreciate it 100%, man. I mean, you know, back in the day before there was live stats and before all that stuff, you know, if you weren't at the game sometimes, you, you wouldn't know the score. So I was uh, very thankful that I could call you and you give me the score, maybe even give me some details about the game. You know, you tell me, oh, Ricky Weeks just hit a three-run homer or whatever the case might be. So That's I appreciate true. it. Well, you, well, I wanted you to keep your listening audience updated. And I think those are the kinds of things that a lot of coaches are afraid to get too close to people like you, to uh, let them in, to let you in into their, their world. Well, my world is your world and Steve Snyder's world and all the other sportcasters who wanted to get in there made sure that you all could be a part of it. Now, let's say some of the things uh, Jock was uh, also, you know, when you, when you came to cover Southern's game, what were you looking for during my era when we were when I was coaching? Well, I tell you what, I, I spent many uh, spring days going out there on Saturday and Sunday. I always enjoyed it. There was always the smell of great food up front. <laughs> Somebody was cooking something good up front, whether it was you know barbecue or maybe boiling some shrimp or whatever the case might be. And uh, you know, I, I just remember going out there. You would always um, you know give me something on the camera. You 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 tell me hello or. Uh, you tell the audience hello or whatever, and then uh, I just remember a lot more times than not, uh, the, the Jaguars would win that day. And so, um, and then certainly, you know, in the month of May when you guys had played that swag baseball tournament, uh, there was a lot of dog filing by the blue and gold over the years and lots of trips to the NCAA tournament. And, uh, you know, speaking of Steve Schneider, um, you know, we've got that video still of you celebrating back in 1987 when you beat Cal State Fullerton yes. on, that, uh, on that evening in the NCAA tournament. And, uh, and man, I'll, I'll never forget your team that went, uh, I guess you were 45-3 and three in the regular season with Ricky, Fernando, uh, uh, Mike Woods, yeah. uh, all those guys. And, uh, and if you had a little more pitching, I think you could have won that regional when you went to Hattiesburg. But, uh yeah, I, I just uh, I always remember that, and and I and I was visiting with uh, your friend Stanley Skip Burpin the other day, and, and and told him that I felt blessed that I could, uh, you know, go to a Southern game and then go to an LSU game and then have uh, you know two Hall of Famers right there in the same town, and now Paul Maneri that makes it three. So uh, you know we've we've been blessed with a lot of great baseball in, in Baton Rouge. Well, and Southern, I don't know if the people at Southern. Uh, really truly understand how fortunate they were to get the kind of coverage that we get. Historical black schools nowhere else in, in this United States of America get any type of coverage you all give us. And I really want to say thanks to you, Steve, the whole family at Channel 9, because you all really made us feel special with the coverage that you all gave us. 
Well, that's our job, man, and we enjoy it. Uh, you know, and I'll mention it from the newspaper. I think uh, I think Joe Schiefelbein really kind of uh, was a trendsetter in that regard too. You know, as far as the uh, the, the news, the print industry goes. But yeah, Steve. Uh, I think Steve. That was one of his first beats when he started working at Channel Nine back in 1984. He covered the SWAT for seven years. Uh, Southern football, basketball, baseball. The days of Avery Johnson there and the Mini Dome and. Uh, Marino Kassim and all those great uh, legendary figures uh, over at Southern. So, uh, yeah, I mean, certainly, uh, and, and, you know, and your fans, they're, they're not they're not demanding. They're not saying, and Steve said, look, they just want, just give them some coverage, give them some attention. That's all they want, you know, and uh, and, and, and the fans there are great. And uh, and I'm enjoying the spring football thing, too. I think yeah. it's uh, you know, something unique and different. So, got a lot going on right now. Jock, you know, back uh, when I was in the sports department at Channel 9, I will never forget uh, Baton Rouge's uh, sister, uh, Donna Britt. The first time I anchored, uh, I noticed she would come around to the sports department and ask, okay, what's the lead story? And quite frankly, uh, all things considered, Baton Rouge is, quote, an LSU town. But she would never fail to ask, okay, now, what do you have on Southern, giving the opportunity for the sister school to get coverage as well? That kind of thought process from Donna Britt, Steve Schneider, helped to shape the way I looked at sports in Baton Rouge. How much has that helped to mold your approach to covering sports in Baton Rouge? Well, you make a great point there, uh, Mr. Bugs. I mean, I, you know, you, 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 you follow what you're taught, right? Whether it's your mm-hmm. parents or you get in the industry. And if you get in, you know, I was hired at a very young age at Channel 9 and uh, was probably very lucky to get hired at that age. <laughs> you know, had a long way to go. You know, it's funny when you're younger, you think you know everything, you think you're cool, and you right. get the furthest thing from it. Right. And then, and then maybe as you get older, you might beat yourself up too much. It's funny how that kind of, you overcorrect the wheels, son. But, uh, yeah. you know, when I got there, um, that, that, that was the way it was. That's, what, that's the way it was taught to us, you know. We're, we're never going to miss a Southern home football game, a basketball game, a baseball game. We're going to have a camera there. We're going to cover it. And, um, and we're going to do our best not just to spray it down and then leave. We're going to try to, you know, show you this was the key hit. This was the key uh, basket. This was the key touchdown, you know, and have the post-game reaction and make all the road trips for football and everything. And if Rogers going on the road to the SWAC tournament, we're going to be there. And the NCAA tournament, we're going to go. And so, uh, yeah, that, that Steve, uh, you know, Steve Schneider taught me so much when I got there. You know, when you're growing up, uh, you know, you can get, you think the television is you're going to get your face on TV. I'm going to be popular. I'm going to be this and that. And really, Steve. You know, Steve taught you right away, look, this is about content. This isn't about, uh, you know, put your face on TV for 30-second lead-ins and all that. Right. You know, it's about video, video, score, score, post-game comment, bang, bang, bang. You know, as much as you can jam into that three minutes to seven minutes. And, uh, and, and, and yeah, and, I, and, you know, I didn't know Roger Kador before I, I, I came to town. I, I didn't know you. I didn't know uh, so many people on that side of town, and it's been uh, – it's been a blessing. Pete Richardson, you know, what a treasure, you know, that guy. Uh, getting to know him over the years and, and the different basketball coaches there. So uh, it's, been, it's been fun. You mentioned uh, our friend Steve Schneider, the sports director there at WAFB, the CBS affiliate uh, in Baton Rouge, for those that don't know. He was recently honored uh, with the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Louisiana Association of Broadcasters. How does that help you or force you either or to elevate your game every day when you walk in those in that studio and every newscast when you get on the set understanding what it is you've got to live up to well i can tell you this there there has been more than once in a year where i've got like a a second place or a third place and (laughs) something (laughs) It felt good about that, and guess who was first? You know, Steve you know, Snyder. It was, uh, it was Steve. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Well, for without a doubt, I mean, um, and and I'm not saying this to boast on Channel Nine. I just know it's true. I've been throughout the country, and when we make road trips, I make an effort to watch the local mm-hmm. sports in different mar- markets and compare it to what we do. And I'm right. going to be honest. I mean, other other 
places are not doing the kind of volume of work we're doing. And that starts from Steve at the top. And a huge part of it is the uh, the high school sports. You know, the, mm-hmm. the back in the day, uh, like in 1985 you know, or so, they, they were only going out and covering like one high school football game a week, maybe two. And Steve came up with the idea, hey, look, we need to send cameras out to Kentwood. We need to send cameras out to Gonzales. We need right. to go out to Laplace. You know, uh-huh. and all these places where this great football was going on, but nobody was seeing it. Right. And so, you know, sports line to this day, we get to cover LSU, Southern, the Saints, all this kind of big-time stuff. But the number one thing people come up to is for us, hey, we love that high school football show you do with sports line. So, right. um, and then that's where it starts. That's where Tracy Porter, you know, goes to mm-hmm. Port Allen, and he goes to Indiana, and he just disappears. You kind of forget about him, and then he's playing for the Saints, making the biggest interception in the history of the Saints, including yeah. the, the Super Bowl to win the Super Bowl. So, you know, you plant those seeds with your Marcus Spears and your – your Eric Randall's and your Marcus Randall's early, and that, that, that comes back to, uh, to really help you. Well, it just so happens uh, I was in the sports department at Channel 9 the very first year that Sportsline uh, Friday night kicked off. So thanks for making me feel old, buddy. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. Listen, on, on a serious note, Jock, with all the racial strife in our, in our country these days, uh, and the spillover or crossover, if you will, into sports. How tough has your job become in attempting to relay the social aspect of sports and still hold true uh, to the purists out there that are only concerned about the games and the sports themselves? How tough has your job now become in that regard? Well, I think the last year has certainly been an awakening process. You know, I like the LSU football team in 2019. I, I thought, well, isn't this just the most beautiful thing ever? Where we got white guys, black guys, all working together and had this dream season and everything. And right. And even through all that, even through all, all, all the winning, you still kind of learn there's things beneath the surface still that that need to be addressed. Mm-hmm. And you know, if if the athletes themselves weren't talking about it, then it wouldn't be news. You know, it's not me bringing up something and saying, "Hey, I'm going to make this a story." I mean, it, it was, it was a story, and um, and certainly, uh, I think Coach Ogeron learned a lot last summer about what was going on. Um, I, I, not only the racial stuff, but uh, how to treat women. Um, you know, right. that's, an, that's another huge thing that's come up, obviously. And, right. and LSU's had their share of, uh, it's been a rough year. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, between, uh, you know, this Hush Blackwell report, some of the racial strife and all that. And, you know, and, and it is it, it is kind of amazing when you look back, like a Virg Allsbury, for example. Virg told me he grew up, he didn't go to an LSU football game because there weren't any black people playing. You know, I mean, right. I think the first, Black player LSU got was in 72, uh, 1972. I mean, that may be 50 years ago. It may seem like a long time, but really it's not, you know. And so, so I, you know, I, I think that there, there's a line that's all there uh, between um, spreading the message. And then sometimes I just wonder if, if there are some people of color that just want to say, hey, treat me the same as everybody else. Let's not talk about this and, and keep bringing this up. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I, uh but it's been, a, it's been a year to learn a lot and just kind of sit back and shut your mouth and listen, you know. You know, Jock, there's something you do better than anybody else. You can imitate people's voice. <laughs> you know? Really? Jock, oh, yeah. Yeah. Can and you, you, you shift the gears on me pretty quick from a serious topic to a funny one. So <laughs> I, 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 I wanted to. <laughs> Blame it on Coach, Jock. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been, I wanted to get it out. But I didn't want to do it at the beginning, you know. <laughs> Can you do a Skip Berkman for us? Well, you know, Skip, Skip's like Bill Clinton. You know, everyone does a Bill Clinton, you know. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you something, Roger. I'll tell you, I love your baseball. <laughs> you know, you, Skip, Skip uh, you know, Skip's like, uh, hey, uh, hey, kid, listen here, okay? Uh, look, it's not your fault, okay? That's it's not right. your fault. It's my fault for thinking you yeah. like this, Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I we, I would actually do, do Paul, but you know, Paul has had a tough weekend, and I don't know if we should because I don't want him to think we're picking on him. We're only doing it because we love him, yeah. and I hope that he knows. And you know, we would not do anything to be malicious. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, this well, is a. a I, I agree with you. If they're, if they're winning like they usually are, I'll throw in a little bit there. But yeah. Right now they're having a rough time, but right. uh, I, I tell you what, uh, I would just say, you know. 
Well, Roger, this is the voice of the Tigers, Jim Hawthorne. Yes. Yeah. So lay off, Coach Bye, oh, bye. <laughs> Uh, I, I tell it. you, I love it. I love it, boy. I tell you, we've had some wonder <laughs> over the years, Jacques. We've had some wonderful time uh, with you imitating people's voice. Have you even imitated my voice yet? A little more difficult, oh. huh? Or Jock, we winning five to three in the third <laughs> inning. Why are you swinging at that pitch, Randall? <laughs> uh, you got it. You got oh, it. Oh, Jock. Oh, my goodness. That's pretty good. That yeah. is pretty good. Yeah. But listen, yeah. hey, we really appreciate you coming on. I want you to make sure to tell mom and dad I said hello. I know I hadn't seen them with this pandemic. I hadn't got to see them. But tell them once it's over, with, we'll see each other. Oh, well, you know, it's funny. It's a beautiful spring day today. They decided to come to town, and we were just eating outside here having a little picnic. So yeah. I'll tell them a little for oh. you right now. Go okay. Awesome, well, that's awesome. great. Appreciate you taking the time, Jock. Okay. Hey, guys, thanks so much for having me on. All right. Take yeah. care, Jock. We'll talk with you soon. All right. Let's get another break out of the way before Marty um, – did you wrap your head in duct tape, Marty? <laughs> that way, when it explodes, you'll still have all the pieces. <laughs> We're back with more this uh, week's edition of the Roger Kador Show. Stay close. Oh, my goodness. Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. Hi, I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with The Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And Talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. Hello, guys. It's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After 5 Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Surprise, something good has finally happened in 2020. Yours truly, the Clarence Bug Show gets to be with you every day of the week. That's right, 11 to 12 every weekday. And, of course, the exiles right in front of yours truly from 10 to 11, yours truly 11 to 12. So now it's appointment viewing five days a week here on the Pelican, the Clarence Bug Show. The only thing missing is you. Who says you need a vacation for a view like this? Or I wish there was a place to get in shape. Try getting on the beaten path. Discover an ever-expanding network of trails and greenways. Some quintessential southern beauty. Or romp through the woods in a magical land between the rivers. There's more to explore than you ever imagined. Beyond the swing sets, Breck, we are more than a playground. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Roger Cato Show. Clarence Bugs, along oh with the coach. Uh, coach, we got a whole lot of ground that we're going to try to cover uh, in our final two segments. But feel free. Take your time. You don't, don't have to rush on any of these. Uh, great news for HBCU football. Southern Jackson State been elevated now to air on the big dog on ESPN. That's huge, Coach. And this is this Saturday coming up, right? Uh, the April 3rd. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. April okay. 3rd. Yeah. yeah, that's huge. And, and one of the reasons it's all happening, first is Dion at Jackson State. Right. And second and the most, probably the most important reason is playing spring football. Mm -hmm. I think it's a no-brainer that the SWAC and smaller conferences ought to play spring football why play 
at the same time all the big boys are playing mm -hmm. and they get all of the attention because we've always done it that way and don't have, you, you yeah well you we, can change yeah we, we, we never had a reason to change, to change. before it, it's amazing is it not how we get accustomed to certain things and there's no rhyme or reason to it it's just that we've always done it this way i mean uh, look at daylight savings time we're still doing it even though it really serves no useful purpose but we've always done it that way is that just a part of being a human being uh, well yeah i just think that you're right we it was uniform right it was a one size fit all situation uh -huh. everybody playing this fall right when really this spring probably is a better time to play yeah First, you, 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 you got your weather probably is going to be a little better mm -hmm. for the fans. Also. For the fans, yeah. And uh, I just think it's something about springtime. Families want to be outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just think it has a... You've been locked up all winter, staying inside, yeah. trying to stay warm. Now the, the weather's changing. Yeah. You, you want to get outside and do things with your friends and, and your family. I can tell you that I did have conversation with someone about it and made sense to them. The key now convincing one or two presidents who maybe can bring the other ones in. Right. It makes sense. Right. Well, see, that's your problem, though. It makes sense. It's a losing proposition in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you end up in a city like Baton Rouge and other cities, you end up cannibalizing the audience because you either have to go to one, one or the other. Or the other. <laughs> You can't support both yeah. because they're both taking place yeah. at the same time. Now, yeah. while, you, while it may make sense, all the sense in the world, I don't see it happening anytime soon because, one, we as human beings, when we get set in our ways of doing certain things, it, it, it takes the dickens to change it. But aside from that, if that were to be a serious consideration, what would it do to the other spring sports? They, they, they'll survive. Mm -hmm. When you say do, they're going to be what they do anyway. Right. You know, it's right. not going to hurt them that much. Uh -huh. They are non-revenue producing sports to start with. Mostly, yeah. Mostly for all of them. Yeah. Because football yeah. is barely making it uh -huh. in the fall. Yeah, good so point. You got a better chance in the spring. Mm-hmm. To generate a few more dollars in football, right? Because you, as you mentioned, you, you, they don't have to choose one or the other, right? And then they'll probably come to the football games mm -hmm. if you're competitive in, if the, you're in competitive. the spring. Yeah. In the spring, yeah. Speaking of football games and the swag, I, I'm sure you saw Grambling State has canceled its next two games uh, because of COVID-19 uh, uh, testing at their particular university um i guess in hindsight we knew going in that there was the distinct possibility that some programs were not going to be able to pull this off um the the nature of how contagious COVID is uh getting individuals to do the right thing and and try to mitigate the spread of it grambling canceling their next two although the bayou classic is still supposedly on at this point. I don't think that comes as any surprise to you that they end up canceling two games. No, I'm not surprised at all because uh, administrators are not going to take any chances. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Say, let's just take cancel one and try to play the other one. Yeah. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. This thing is a lot more dangerous than we sometimes we may be taking it. Yeah. This virus is dangerous. Mm -hmm. It hurts young people too. Oh yeah. And and speaking of that, uh, Shreveport, in hosting this year's Bayou Classic, uh, has scheduled three days of events, including a golf tournament, um, a big party with with food and and all day entertainment. How important is it going to be for folks to? act responsibly i mean i know it's the bayou classic <laughs> it's a different venue it, it, it's you know the game that we all love to celebrate but responsibility has got to play a big part in this doesn't it yeah I, yeah i i don't like much about yeah, the I, I, I can see the look on your I face mean, yeah. I, i'm struggling to yeah. say it yeah. i don't like much about shreveport yeah. it's a part of our state right but 
doing it. You could have played Gordon La- Alexandra. I'm just joking. I'm joking. <laughs> please, please let them know, Shreveport, we still love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, man, I just think it's, it's going to be a tough sale up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you're going to lose buses because you got to have the separation Social of seats. Social distancing, You yeah. just can't get yeah. the numbers. The numbers doesn't work. So what then do you say to the person that says, Coach, I understand all that, but – for the sake of rewarding the kids for all they've been through to be able to play, for the sake of the fans being able to enjoy something that they have such a premium on, what do you say to that person about them going on with the Bayou Classic? Well, if you want to take that chance, you can go. Mm -hmm. I mean, we want people to do what they want. That's the American way. Yeah, yeah. All right, we have uh, our final break of today's show. We'll get this done. Come back and talk a little bit more on the final segment of this week's edition of the Roger Cador Show. Stay close. Got termites? Get Premier Pest. PremierPestServices.com Looking to get some keys made, locks rekeyed, or a wide variety of new and used safe? Then look no further than the trusted choice of African Safe and Lock. Conveniently located off of Government Street in Mid City, Baton Road. Trust the expert locksmith at Alfred for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Surprise, something good has finally happened in 2020. Yours truly, the Clarence Bug Show, gets to be with you every day of the week. That's right, 11 to 12 every weekday. And, of course, the exiles right in front of yours truly from 10 to 11, yours truly 11 to 12. So now it's appointment viewing five days a week here on the Pelican, the Clarence Bug Show. The only thing missing is you. Hey, Coach Roger Kador here. There's something about teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When I need a tow, I call Roadrunner Towing. Roadrunner's four generations strong and homegrown right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. Spiders. Premier Pest Services. Welcome back for the final segment of today's edition of the Roger K. Door Show. Coach, uh, Sad news for the athletic community, the Hall of Fame community. And, and you and I both know full well it is that season in life where those that we idolized growing up, watching their athletic exploits on TV and listening on the radio, it's that season in life where they are now going on to their, their great reward. Not that it ever makes it any easier, but it is the reality of the day. Uh, right after we left air last week, uh, we found out that one of the all-time greats, Elgin Baylor, uh, at the age of 86, if memory serves correct, uh, is no longer with us. Yeah, and, you know, he, he did a lot of things. Plus, he served in the Army, mm-hmm. National Guard. He served this country and went. he started out, I forgot what college he started out. Then he ended up going to C, uh, University of Seattle, mm-hmm. where he really blossomed and uh, got drafted by the Lakers. Well, Minneapolis. Minneapolis Lakers at the time, right. yeah. And, uh, and really got to be a good player. But you know what's also a good person, Clarence? Mm-hmm. I think, you know, there are a lot of people, players who are great, but they're not very likable. Good people, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. he was likable. Yeah. I, um, in reading 
condolences and comments from real high profile athletes. The recurring theme was what you just talked about. The fact that um, he was an individual that always carried himself with dignity and with respect. I, I, I feel weird in asking the question, but it's a sincere observation of today's society. Dignity, respect. Are those values no longer at the forefront as much as they used to be? Or do we as society, because of all the negative negativity in the media and everything else, do we kind of go out of our way to look for the negative side? Or, or is dignity and respect as much a cornerstone uh, of, of athletics and being a good person as it was in days gone by? Well, I don't think that that will ever go away. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably highlighted more when one or two incident happens. Right. And we think it's more than what it is. Okay. But dignity and respect still plays the role in many, many situations. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to ever lose that. I hope you're you, right. There are some level that is not where you like for it to be. Right. But it's still there. Yeah. Ironically, um, Elgin lost in the championship seven times. And the old folk used to call it buzzard luck. <laughs> I mean, there's bad luck. And then there's really, really, really bad luck, a.k.a. buzzard luck. Lost in the championship seven times. The year he retired, nine games into the season because his knees were bad, he felt that he couldn't live up to expectations, wasn't helping the team uh, as much as he should. He retires the same year they finally win <laughs> the championship is does that diminish his legacy in it not winning that championship with some people yes with other people no mm -hmm. you got to look at who you were losing to the boston great celtics point. great point i mean great point they were in the way uh-huh uh, bill russell and those celtics team were in the way from mm -hmm. them winning yeah sort of like when Detroit couldn't get back by Michael Jordan. Right. They couldn't. They were the bad right. boys until they got by them and they were able to win. So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a thing. Just think of Philadelphia. Uh, the Lakers were in the way. I mean, you get great teams get in your way. Yeah. And it makes it tough. So I don't think it diminishes his legacy. Nor do I. Nor do I. Uh, uh, switching gears. Um, Big announcement last week, actually uh, this past weekend. Are we starting to see a little bit of a trend here maybe uh, with, with Deion Sanders being the, the, the highlight of all of this? Speaking of Michael Jordan, his son, Skyler, signed last week. He's going to play football at, wait for it, Alcorn State. Ooh. Michael, Michael Jordan's son, Skylar Jordan, oh, really? has signed to play football with Alcorn State. I didn't know that. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, of course you got information I don't have. Ah. But ah. that's a good thing. Alcorn, I love that university. I think it's a beautiful. Oh, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. It sits on the rolling hill on the bank of the uh -huh. Mississippi. Uh -huh. I ju it's just a beautiful place. As, as Marino Chasm used to fondly call it, God's country. God's country. I yeah. like that place. Yeah. Got to uh, also send out a tip of the hat as we wrap up today's show uh, to the track team at North Carolina A&T, another historically black college and university, turning in this past weekend the fastest four by 400 meter relay time on the planet. Uh, it's the same team that early on in the season uh, had folks really starting to take a look. Well, this past weekend, they turned in the fastest four by 400 meter relay time on the planet. Way to go, North Carolina A&T. Speaking of go, 
Time for the folks in the <laughs> truck to go. Time for Marty to go. Time for the coach to go. And time for yours truly to go. Oh, and Aaron says she got to go too. Oh Hopefully, my. we will see you next week with another edition of the Roger Cador Show. Till then, go Jags. <laughs>